watching Miami Temple Kids. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Today is May 16. Let's sit back and listen to our Sabbath school lesson review by our teachers. Now, remember we've been playing videos from VBS before and after our Sabbath school lesson reviews. So go back and listen to them so you guys are ready for VBS this summer. We'll see you in a little while, okay? Bye. Good morning, Cradle Roll class. Today is May 16th, and it's time for our Sabbath School lesson review. Can you tell me what our memory verse is? It's the same one we've done the whole month, so you guys should know it by now. Ready? Let us go to the house of the Lord. Good job, one more time. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Oh, you guys do that so well. Now, do you remember what our lesson is about? Jesus goes to church. You guys are amazing, that's right. Jesus goes to church. When Jesus was a little boy, he would go to church every Sabbath, just like we do. Now Jesus didn't go to church in a car, he would walk to church. Normally, when we come here, we usually take our cars, but we aren't in the building right now, we're at home, so we can do just like Jesus did and take walks on Sabbath. One of the great things about walking is we get to see nature. We get to explore all the amazing things that God made for us. So I'm gonna show you guys some pictures of things that we can see and you tell me what they are, okay? Ready? Here's the first one. What's this? That's right, it's a tree. Good job. Now, what lives in trees? A squirrel! You guys said a bird. I know, I tricked you guys. This time I put a picture of a squirrel. Squirrels also live in trees just like birds. Now, we live in South Florida, and in Miami, there's lots and lots of lakes. And when we walk by the lake, what can we see swimming in the lake? That wasn't a duck, it was a crocodile! I know, crocodiles are big and scary, but sometimes they're so cute, as long as they're far away from us. We also get to see those around. 
What else do we see when we're walking around? That's right, those are pretty flowers. We can see the beautiful flowers that God made for us. Now when Jesus grew up, he kept going to church just like his parents had taught him to do. And just like I hope you guys do too as you grow up, we always come to church on Sabbath. When Jesus grew up, he went back to the temple and this time he read from the scroll. This is what a picture of a scroll looks like. It's a little bit different from the Bibles that we have, but the scroll has the writings of our prophets in them. And that's what Jesus would do. He would read from the scroll every Sabbath. Afterwards, he would sit and talk to people about all the things that the, he had read. Similar to what we do here at church too. We come and we listen to our pastor speak and then we sit and we discuss what the sermon was about for that day. Now one of the things that we do when we come to church is we love to sing. Singing is a form of worship and even though we're not doing that here at this church right now, we're doing it at our churches at home. One of the great things about being at home and at church is that we can still sing. We sing our praise songs, we sing in our Sabbath school classes. What else do we do when we come to church? That's right, we also pray. We pray and that's how we also worship God. We also give our offerings. That's how we are thankful to God for all the many things that He has given us. What else do we do at church? We also read our Bibles. Good job. Do you guys remember what we do with our hands? We put them together and we open and we say, I open my Bible book and read. He loves me. He loves me. Good job. Can you guys do that one more time with me? Okay, let's close our hands. I open my Bible book and read. He loves me. He loves me. That's amazing. Now parents, this week, there's a craft that you guys can do with your children. Go to MiamiTemple.org and click on the beginner's lesson, the teacher's edition. In there, you're going to see this piece of paper. It's for lesson two, week three, and it's a bookmark. This is what you guys can do. You can print out the bookmark page and cut it out and then glue it together and then write your memory verse, let us go to the house of the Lord. That way you can use it to bookmark your favorite stories that are in the Bible. Remember, miamitemple.org, beginners, the teacher's edition activities page. There you will find the copy of how to do the bookmark. And you guys can either print it out or you can just freehand it and get some paper and cut it out and make the bookmark for your Bible. I miss you guys so much, but for now it's time to do our Sabbath school poem. So everybody stand up, stand up, stand up. Ready? From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, I will be Jesus' child wherever I go. I hope you guys have a happy Sabbath. Bye. Hi, my name is Kaylee. The memory verse is for kindergarten class, Psalm 30, verse 12. God, I will praise you forever. Hi, kindergartners. It's another Sabbath. And we're still not together, but it's okay. Well, no, it's not really okay, because you're going to have to sing for me so loud from your house that I can hear it all the way over here at church. Okay, now we're going to do a song that we have sung many times before. My God is so great. All right, so get your muscles ready. All right, remember all the actions, mountains, rivers, stars. Okay, we're going to sing. Ready? My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Mountains, the mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. 
my God is so great, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. Ah, I miss you so much. So I, I can't wait to see you again. Well, this week is week number seven. But as usual, I'm telling you the story ahead of time for week eight. So you can study it all through week seven. All right. Now, <clears throat> why do we sing my God is so great? Because in the story, something great happened. Okay. Now, Jesus and his disciples were walking on their way to Jerusalem. Now, as they were walking, they heard some voices calling out from like far away. And the voices were saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When Jesus looked, he saw some men, but they wouldn't come really close to him. Look, they were over here and they couldn't come close because they were sick. They had something called leprosy. And it's like a disease of your skin. And then it starts to eat away your skin and it eats away the skin of your nose and your fingers. And it was a bad disease and other people could catch that disease also. So they had to stay far away and they had to yell, unclean, unclean. So nobody would come near them. But they had heard about Jesus and they knew that Jesus could make them better. So they came as close as they could, but not close enough because the disciples were pretty scared too. And they said, Master, have pity on us. And Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priests. Now, the priests have to say that you're well before you can go back to your family. So they started on their way to the priest. And as they walked, they realized that they'd been healed. And they were so happy that they were jumping up and down going, and there was no more leprosy on their skin. It was all gone. This was great, this was fantastic. They were so happy. As they ran to the priest, one turned back and he knelt down in front of Jesus and he said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Then Jesus looked at him and Jesus smiled at him. But then Jesus said, didn't I heal 10 people? Wait a minute, let's see how much 10 is. Okay, let me see, on your fingers, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And how many people came back to say thank you? One. Wow. Jesus said, didn't I heal ten people? Where are the other nine? But only one came back to say thank you. Now it's very important when people do things for you, you say thank you. I was thinking that your craft could be a thank you note. It could be. Or you could make your 10 lepers out of paper, but you have to get a big piece of paper. Or you can get your regular paper and tape like three pieces together. Put tape like right here. And then you can draw one man on here. You can cut him out. And then you can have them stuck together like this. But see, that paper only makes three. So you have to put three papers together and that will make nine, then you have to make an extra one. That was the one that came back. So remember to say thank you. It's very important. Your memory verse is, God, I will praise you forever. Let's try that, God. I will praise you forever. One more time. God, I will praise you forever. And where is that found? It's found in your 10 Bibles, in Psalms 30, verse 12. Psalms is like in the middle of your Bible, okay? Psalms 30 verse 12, and it says what? God, I will praise you forever. Remember to say thank you all during this week, all during your life, because people are always doing nice things for you. And when people tell you thank you, that makes you feel good too. So remember to say thank you. I hope I can see you soon. Until then, bye. Hi, my name is Malachi, and the memory verse for primary class is Philippians 1, verse 27. Work together as a team for the faith. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. I miss all of you in our primary class. Kika, say hi before you go to sleep. Hi. 
Last week, we studied about Noah and his family building the ark. Do you remember? Let me show you a picture right here. See? Noah and his family, they were working in the ark. Today, we are going to continue that story. The title of our lesson is A Floating Zoo. To float means that you're on top of the water and you don't sink. And a zoo is where they keep wild animals. Have you been to a zoo before? I have. I have not been lucky. I have never seen them, the, the, the people that work in the zoo, feeding the animals if it's not in a show. But sometimes they have to take the animals out to clean it and then to give them food. Well, it's something like that what we're going to talk about today. Before we continue, let's remember what the message, that the memory verse is. It is found in the International Children's Bible, Philippians 1.27. It says, work together as a team for the faith. And the message is very similar to last week. It's last week's. It says, people in God's family work together. So now the ark is finished. Beautiful complete, done. But before Noah and his family go in, there's more things that they need to do because you see, the ark is gonna have other occupants. God told Noah to bring pair of animals. There is two, the male and the female. He wanted seven of the clean animals, seven pairs of the clean animals and one pair of the unclean ones. And God said, okay, we're gonna prepare for all of that. You know what was the main job they had to do? Everybody had to eat. Not only Noah and his wife and his sons and the wives of the sons, but all the animals. So they had to pack the pantries with food. They have to heap the haylofts and fill the granaries. They had to stuff the cabinets and stock the storerooms. Food for many, many occupants. And then when that was ready, the animals came. Angels guided them two by twos. And that's the image we see here. We see the little ones like bunnies, like pigeons, like other birds, like chickens. What about? Uh, goats and sheep and then we have the dogs like my dog and we have cats and then we have the big ones like elephants and the horses and the moose and the deer and so on many animals were placed inside the ark and do you think that they went into a luxury trip where they were all very happily being served no the whole family got together and they had to work. They had to give the animals clean water. They have to take the food from the storerooms and the places where they have put the food and give it to the animals. They also had to keep where the clean animals up. were. So Noah became an official chief zookeeper and all the family worked together. They had to work to take care of God's creatures. God had entrusted them and they did a great job. Now, we humans in our time, we may not have a big ark to go and work on, but we have our homes with our mom and dads. We have our schools. We have uh, the church and all of us need to care. Do you know how hard it can be to work alone no it's a lot of work there are dishes to do floors to sweep mop there are cleaning windows washing dishes. dishes there are many things that we can do in our school if it's not cleaning floors maybe we need to help take the dust out or maybe even help paint we can always work together together to help others this finishes the review of our Sabbath school class. Hi, my name is Samantha and the memory verse for class is Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, 
Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. Mark 9.35 Happy Sabbath, junior class. We're on lesson seven now. And the title of this week's lesson is Man Overboard. Parents, as usual, I want you to go to miamitemple.org and download the teacher's edition. On page 78 and 79 is the lesson, as you should have it with your children. But I want you to focus on the section of what would you do. It's a scenario that your child will have to give you some answers for that situation. Now, I have Sara Rodriguez from the junior class, and we're gonna play a game, all right, to illustrate the lesson. So Sara, this game we used to play when we were kids. I want you to put your hand in the middle of the bat, right, right there. Now my hand is gonna go on top of yours, and then your hand goes on top of mine, and then we go up, and up, oh, very good, you won, you won, you go on. So let me try it. Now it's my turn. I'm going to start. I'm going to go down here. One. Let's see who's going to win this time. All right. Up, up, up. You won again. Oh my goodness. Now, this is what we're going to do. Now we're going to go in the opposite direction. And parents, I want you to do this with your child. Either find a stick or, or a rod or a whistle bat if you have that or a regular bat, just use something where you guys can take turns, right? So, Sara, hand in the middle. Now we're gonna go down, 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 down. You're the winner again. Now it's my turn. Here we go. I'm gonna start here, down, down. And <laughs> Sara, Sara is uh, a champ at this game, okay? Now, uh, the lesson this week was about Paul going to an island, but he was shipwrecked when he got to that island. So, a couple of things happened to him while he was there, and that our junior class is gonna learn with their parents at home. But Sara, can you read for us our PowerPoint for this week? Mm -hmm. We seek opportunities to serve others in every situation. It's just like this bat. You know, people don't like opportunities where they are at the bottom. They want opportunities where they're at the top. And sometimes that means that they try to get other people to do things for them, but not for Paul. He was in a really difficult and low situation. And even in that situation, he, he got bit by a snake. I mean, he still served God and you can serve God and we can serve God even in challenging and difficult times. Happy Sabbath, junior class. And remember, there's always an opportunity to serve because we seek opportunities to serve others in every situation. Hi, my name is Rebecca and the memory text for class is, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth, keep watch over the door of my lips. Psalms 141, verse three. Hello, my early teens. Happy Sabbath and welcome back to our lesson review. How are you? Well, I hope. And I also hope that you had a wonderful time with your moms and you had the opportunity to show her just how much you appreciate her. Now, speaking of moms, if you did this week's lesson, lesson number seven, you know that it all started with the story of a mom who was having a hard time communicating with her daughter, right? Okay, now if you did the lesson, great. If you didn't, this is a quick recap. So this lady, this mom was having a hard time communicating with her daughter. She noticed that her daughter would just clam up. In other words, she wouldn't tell her anything. And you know, it was a one way kind of thing. So one day she decided to apply the banana principle. The banana principle, you may be wondering what it is. Well, this is what she did. She sat at the kitchen table and her daughter was there eating. Um, and the mom took a banana and she asked her daughter a question. And when her daughter started answering, she very deliberately peeled the banana and she took a bite and her daughter spoke. By the time the daughter was done speaking, the mom asked her another question and very deliberately she took another bite of her banana. 
and the daughter spoke. And so it went on and on and on and on. And communication was much better. Do you know why? Yes, because the mom was not talking when her daughter was talking. All she was doing was listening. So yes, this week's lesson, lesson number seven is entitled Listening on Purpose Part One. So we'll be talking about listening this week and next week. Now, have you ever had a conversation with someone where you just couldn't get a word in edgewise? The person would talk on and 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 you had no opportunity to interject, to participate, to contribute. Like you just couldn't get a word in right and that person just kept going on and on and talking and talking and talking and talking ad infinitum ad nauseam two words for you to look up all right now actually if that ever happened to you that would not be considered a conversation because a conversation entails give and take right it entails both people participating and contributing to the conversation growing up one of the first things that my parents ever taught me was give and take. And if you have a sibling or more than one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You had to take turns playing with certain toys. You had to take turns maybe watching your favorite cartoon or your show. In other words, you had to learn that you are not alone in the world and that you have to take other people into consideration. And that's really important because let's think about this. Being a Christian is about putting others first. Being a Christian takes into consideration the fact that we care about others and we want them to feel appreciated and heard, right? Okay, so uh, talking about listening is really talking about communication, right? Because communication, it's not just being able to express how we feel, being able to express how um, our point of view, but it's also being able to hear what the person is saying and interpreting correctly what that person has said. Now, as cheesy as this may sound, what I'm about to say is true. God gave us one mouth <laughs> and two ears. Why? Well, because he knows that listening is twice as hard as talking, right? Now, listening is difficult, but listening well is even more difficult because... Actually, it's probably one of the most difficult things that you will ever do. Um, but it's also one of the most important thing that we learn to do as we grow and as we mature. As a matter of fact, I think that there would be fewer problems, fewer misunderstanding, fighting and war if people would just be quiet and listen and listen well. So when we listen, when we're communicating with others, we are hearing what the person is saying, but we're also watching for certain cues or clues. Because you know what? They say that more than 90% of what we communicate is done non-verbally. So is the person tense? You know, is, is the person relaxed? Um, how is their facial expression? What is their body language? That tells us a lot about what the person is really saying. So would you like to be a better listener? Well, here are four tips. Tip number one, put aside, aside your feelings, whatever prejudices, um, arguments, um, any need to impress or preconceive ideas, put those aside, all right? Be impartial and listen. Number two, focus. Don't daydream. Don't let your mind wander or even rehearse what you're going to say next or next or, or allow yourself to be distracted or look for, you know, don't look for an opening to jump into the conversation, right? Okay. So number three, don't interrupt. Let the person speak unless you're asking for a clarification or if there's a fire. Those are the only two reasons why you could interrupt. And number four, listen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> listen and watch. 
<laughs> listen and watch. Like I said before, don't just listen with your ears, but look also to see what the person is conveying through their body language. Of course, all of this only gets better the more you practice it, right? I say that all the time. The more you practice something, the better you, you get at it. And you know what? Um, it also comes from us practicing listening to the Holy Spirit because it's only the Holy Spirit that can make it clear to us what some of our prejudices may be, what some of our preconceived notions may be so that we could get rid of those things so that we can have an open avenue, an open communication with others. And this will help you to um, focus and to know um, and to clarify and to be able to read emotions, okay? So praying and studying God's words will help to open your mind and your hearts to the needs of the people around us. Unfortunately, we are human, so that means we're self-centered and we tend to focus on ourselves. And sometimes we act as if listening is only a pause until we can speak again, right? We can hardly wait for the person to stop talking so that we can um, say what's on our mind and we're more interested in unloading our thoughts and really hearing what the other person has to say. Now here's a vital principle. You can't learn what is on somebody else's mind unless, I mean, if we do all the talking. And like I said before, the essence of Christianity is concern for others. We show our love by allowing people to share or to have the freedom to share their inmost thoughts, right? And their feelings. And to love another person is to gen genuinely care. And we can't love someone if we don't learn to know them. And we can't know someone if we don't take the time to listen to their hearts. So. Next time you find yourself on a one-way conversation and you're the one doing most of the talking, grab a banana, <laughs> ask some questions, and listen. So until next time, do your lesson, wash your hands, and take care of each other. Bye. And that was our Sabbath School lesson review for this week. Now parents, last week I had your kids remind you, hopefully you remember, between now and the 11 a.m. service, please log on to miamitemple.org. There you will find the lessons for all your children so that you can review at home. Look for the teacher's edition. That's where you'll get ideas on how to best review the lessons with your children. Have a happy Sabbath. Bye. Faith and